Hi, my name is Daryl Tan. I'm an infectious diseases physician and a clinician scientist at St. Michael's Hospital and at the University of Toronto here in Toronto, Canada. Uh, I'm really excited today to be talking about the release of Canadian guidelines on HIV pre-exposure prophylaxis or PrEP uh, as well as non-occupational post-exposure prophylaxis also known as NPEP. Uh, they're the first guidelines of their kind in Canada and they're being published in the Canadian Medical Association Journal in conjunction with World AIDS Day this year. We're really excited about this initiative uh, because uh, HIV prevention is a really important public health priority uh, in this country. There's data from the Public Health Agency of Canada that's shown that despite all of the effort that's gone into preventing HIV through behavioral approaches, through treatment of HIV infection, and despite all of the successes that we've seen over the years, uh, unfortunately rates of new HIV infections in this country continue to be relatively stable uh, and not nearly reaching the improvements that we've been hoping to see. Uh, in fact, the Public Health Agency of Canada reports that there are certain key populations that are really disproportionately affected by HIV infections, notably gay and bisexual and other men who have sex with men, uh, who have a rate of HIV infection that's 131 times higher than other Canadian men. Uh, and other priority populations include people who use drugs, uh, indigenous populations across the country, uh, women who are exposed to other individuals from some of these categories, uh, etc. So there's really a need for new strategies to prevent HIV infection and PrEP as well as PEP or NPEP uh, have been uh, really important new tools in our armamentarium. Uh, PEP has been a strategy that uh, we have used in Canada and many other countries around the world for a couple of decades now, uh, but PrEP is relatively newer. Uh, although the initial prescriptions for PrEP in Canada were probably happening already in around 2013 or thereabouts, uh, in fact Health Canada approval for PrEP didn't come until early 2016. Uh, and that's considerably later than in some other countries around the world, notably the United States, where uh, PrEP was first approved by the FDA in 2012. So in the last few years, we've observed that there's been a lot of interest in PEP and PrEP uh, from providers as well as from people at risk for HIV infection uh, and their partners. Uh, and there was really a lack of good information about how people could access this, how people could use this uh, safely and, and effectively. Uh, in particular, uh, we observed that a lot of folks were going to providers and asking about PrEP because they were learning about it from friends or on the internet, uh, but really not finding good uh, information sources. Uh, a lot of physicians and other providers themselves were interested in getting involved in providing this to their patients, but really not finding good resources uh, from Canada on how to safely and effectively provide this to their patients. So as a result, in 2015, we obtained a small grant from the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, the CIHR, and also secured some in-kind support from the CIHR Canadian HIV Trials Network, also known as the CTN, to bring together a panel of about two dozen experts from across the country that had expertise in PEP and PrEP, and they came from a whole bunch of different relevant disciplines. So we have experts in infectious diseases, in family medicine, in emergency medicine, in nursing, in pharmacy, in public health, uh, as well as community organizations. And we all came together and reviewed the best scientific evidence uh, over the last couple of years, scrutinized it, and used a very rigorous methodology called the GRADE methodology in order to go through all that information and come up with concrete recommendations to frontline providers on how to prescribe NPEP and PrEP to people at risk for acquiring HIV. A number of jurisdictions around the world and major international guideline bodies have been recommending that PrEP and PEP in combination with other strategies uh, be used to move us towards a time when we could see uh, the decrease in the rate of new HIV infections down to almost zero. Our hope is that these Canadian guidelines can help us move towards the elimination of new HIV infections in Canada by providing information on how providers and patients and public health authorities can use these new tools to effectively prevent HIV infection in people at risk.